Okay, so we plugged it into the formula. Now we're going to simplify it. So you're going to start with simplifying this stuff under the radical. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to take my calculator. By the way, you don't need this, um, this expense of a calculator. You can just use a scientific calculator, something that you can square and take square roots of. Okay, that's all you really need for this. So I'm going to put in my calculator, 11 squared, okay, or you can also, if you're just squaring it, just put in 11 times 11, right, because that's just the same thing. So 11 squared, I'm going to put in minus 4 times 4, oops, hold on, times 4, Um, times negative 20 and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter you should get 441 so you should practice this see if you put it in correctly if you didn't put it in correctly you would get um, not you wouldn't get 441 you would get a different number okay so we put that in make sure that you put a subtraction sign there not a negative sign and that when you're multiplying the negative 20, you put a negative 20, right? Because there's different signs for minus and negative. Okay, so 441, we're going to put that in on our notes. So all of this stuff under the radical reduces to 441. So I'm going to put that 441, and I'm going to rewrite all this other stuff over here. Okay, so now my next step is to see if there's this number, sorry, if this number is actually a perfect square. So I'm going to put in square root, square root of 441. I'm going I'm to hit enter and see if that's a perfect square. If it is, it'll give me a whole number. And it does. It gives me 21. So that's the number that's going to go um, in that place. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals negative 11 plus or minus 21 over 8. So from here, um, we're going to do something a little bit different that you probably have never done before. Um, we're going to take one equation, we're going to make two equations. Because you're probably wondering, why is it plus minus? That's because it's both of those things. It's two equations in one. We're going to break it up now, where we have one that is plus, so negative 11 plus 21 over 8. And my second one is going to be x equals negative 11 minus 21 over 8. Okay, sorry, so I broke that up. Because remember, when we're talking about quadratics, we're talking about a U-shaped graph that usually, not always, has two solutions, two places where it crosses the x-axis. And that's what we're solving for right now. So I'm just going to put this in my calculator. I'm first going to make sure that both the top and the bottom are completely reduced. So negative 11 plus 21, I can reduce that more. I can simplify that more. I can actually evaluate it and get a number. So I'm going to put that in. So I'll put in negative 11 plus 21, oh, hold on, plus 21, that gives me 10. So then I go in, I divide that by 8, and the reduced form of that is going to be 5 over 4, so that's why I'm going to put x equals 5 over 4. Next step, I'm going to go to the next equation and I'm going to solve that. So I'm going to simplify both of these completely. Um, this one is just a number, so it's already simplified as much as it can go. This top one, I can actually do that. I can put in negative 11 minus 21 and actually get a number. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put in negative 11 minus 21. That gives me negative 32. I'm going to divide that by 8. It's going to be negative 4. So I'm going to put that in. x equals negative 4. So in our solutions, I'm going to go ahead and put that in my solutions bracket. Okay, so this is not a coordinate, this is a solution bracket. That means that these are just solutions that we have in here. So I'm going to put in 5 over 4, comma, negative 4. So those are my two solutions for my quadratic.
So on a graph, you would see it like this. This is just a rough sketch, but five-fourths. That's a little bit more than one, right? So that's going to be, I'm just going to put, I put one here. That's going to be just a little bit more than one. And then I'll put one, two, three, four. Negative four over here. Um, I know that this is going to be a U shape like a smiley face, because this is a positive x squared term. If this was actually a negative, it would be an upside down u. But because it's positive, we know that it's going to be right side up. So smiley face u, and that's what it would look like. This would be 5 fourths here, and this would be negative 4. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, So let's do one more together. So on this one, sorry, let me, I'm just going to put that over here so you can kind of write that in if you didn't. Awkward silence. Okay, we're going to go to the next one. <clears throat> so we got x squared minus 5x minus 24 equals 0. So let's go ahead and rewrite our quadratic formula. On your EOC, they'll already have that for you. You won't have to memorize it. It'll already be there. But we're just going to go ahead and write that. Here. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times ac all over 2 times a. So I want you to look at this and I want you to ask yourself, what is my a, what is my b, what is my c? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Remember, a is the number that's in front of the x squared. b is the number that's in front of the x to the power of 1. And c is the number that's by itself. So hopefully you put a as 1, b as negative 5, and c as negative 24. Okay, so we got a, b, and c. We found those terms. Now let's plug it into the quadratic formula. Okay, so remember, anywhere there's a variable, you're going to put a number in for that variable. So I'm going to put in parentheses for you, kind of just to show you where that should go, right? So negative b, that's a number. So I'm going to put negative parentheses, because you're going to put a number in there. Plus or minus square root of b, I'm going to put parentheses for the b, squared, minus 4 times parentheses, times another parentheses, right, because that's going to be your a and your c, right, the numbers for a and c are going to go here and here, and then you're going to put all of that over 2 times a, and um, instead of a, I'm going to put in the parentheses. So I want you to go through and I want you to actually go ahead and try to plug in all those numbers where they go into the formula. Okay, so let's see if you got it right. So in this first one, you're going to put negative 5, because that's my b value. And this next one, it's also b, so that's going to also be negative 5. The number that goes next to the 4 is going to be your a value, right? So my a value is 1, so that's what goes here. Next, you're going to multiply the c value which was negative 24, so you should put a negative 24 here. And then the number that goes next to the 2, that's your a value, right? Because that's what the formula says. So we're putting in 1 for that. Okay, so we got it all plugged in. Now if you notice, you have two negatives here. You had a negative from the formula, and you had a negative from the b value. So you need to make sure that you put both of those in. Don't take one out just because the b value is negative. Make sure that you write both of those in. So if you remember, if you multiply a negative times a negative, it's going to give you a positive. 
So let's go ahead and rewrite it as a positive 5. We're going to keep this all the same in here. Let's go ahead and reduce this part on the bottom. 2 times 1, that's pretty easy, right? That's just going to be 2. Okay, so from here, we're going to reduce all of the stuff under the radical first. So we're going to put that in our calculator. Make sure this negative 5, you put parentheses negative 5, close parentheses, and then put squared. If you don't do that, you, you might get a different answer, okay, depending on what kind of calculator you have. Okay. So we're going to turn this on. Okay, and I'm going to put this in negative 5, oh wait, hold on, I got the parentheses. Parentheses, negative 5, squared, minus 4, times 1, times negative 24. Hit enter, you should get 121. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and put in your calculator, figure out, tell me what the square root of 121 is. So if you found that the square root of 121 is 11, you're right. Okay, so some of you might have that memorized, so hopefully that would help you. But if you don't, just put in the calculator, it's fine. So we're going to rewrite that. 5 equals 5 plus or minus 11 over 2. Thank you, Benjamin. I'm almost done, okay? Wait, but I'm not done. That's too big. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so... We have x equals 5 plus or minus 11 over 2. Remember, this is the point where we have to break it up into two equations. One's going to be plus and one's going to be negative. So I'm going to put in here x equals 5 plus 11 over 2, comma, x equals 5 minus 11 over 2. So I want you to go ahead, put that in your calculator, figure out and tell me what these, um, you don't have to tell me, but go ahead and put that in your calculator and figure out what those uh, values are going to be, what your roots are going to be. So first, figure out what that number is, then divide by 2. Figure out what this number is, then divide that by 2. Okay, so if you got 8 for the first one, you're right. If you got negative 3 for the second one, you're right. So let's go ahead and put that in our solution bracket. We'll put this on the bottom. And if I did a rough sketch of this, it would look like this. Um, I need to check to see if it's positive, so I look back up here. My x squared term was positive, so I know this is a positive quadratic. I'm going to make this a smiley face u. Okay, and that's all we did today. So, um, I'm going to have some homework questions uh, for you um, tomorrow.
So just make sure that you're ready for that. Okay. Have a good day. Bye.